What's good, y'all? Welcome back. Today, look, dude. Whoa, 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 whoa. I shouldn't have to tell you I'm about to do my re like my reaction intro. I shouldn't. Like, Why? I thought, you should have told me that. <laughs> I just said, I just said I hit the record button. Did you not think I was going to get into it? We in it. We here. Y'all, we're reacting to Blink of an Eye and we have a special guest. What's good, bro? What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> this is... This is the man, the myth, the legend that I've been talking about. The guy that got me in the NASCAR. This is him. So he's going to watch it with us. Explain while we watch. And it's just, it's going to be amazing. I think uh, I think this is going to be fun for everybody watching, honestly. How you feel about it, Kyle? I, I think you're going to enjoy it. I think it gives a different perspective um, from the thing that you've seen a million times. Um, it's a fresh perspective, and I think I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Well, over here, I'm literally just giggling because it just, it feels so professional. <laughs> Are you still recording? Yes, I'm still, this is, this is staying in the video. Oh, this no. This is staying in the video, Oh, bro. no. Oh, but now, nah, I hope you guys enjoy the reaction. Uh, if you guys want to see me do more stuff with him like this, let me know down in the comments. Original video link will be down in the description. Let's get into the video. If it matters for anyone, I'm a Chase Elliott fan, so. Oh, yeah, and there you go. Now you can, uh. Talk about now, that in the now. I can I can either want. either get some love or some hate on that. One of the two. I'm pretty sure it's a lot of love. I think most of most of them are, are Chase fans. Yeah, everyone honestly. loves Chase. Yeah. All right, let's get into this. I'm excited. Let's go. All right. All right. I think you'll dig this premise. So, uh, this is this shows from Michael Michael Waltrip's view, a, a lesser known guy in the whole grand story. Got you. Let me know if um you know audio shit happens and I gotta fix stuff for the stream. Nah, you're good. All right, but damn, this camera nice. This is what North Carolina Hi, looks like. Hi, this is Trace Atkins, your host on Country Music Countdown. Dude, it's, it, this starts as about as redneck as you expect it would. This one takes us back <laughs> to February 2001. Oh, uh, man. This is going to be a great fucking video. <laughs> Just a good old boy in his truck. <laughs> it was a day we'll never forget. A day of triumph and tragedy. You're out there listening, Mikey. This one's for you. Oh, this shit is most definitely copywritten. So, <laughs> ain't, ain't gonna be no sound for a second, y'all. This shit finna cut out. Not, not gonna cap. Well, I feel like you know the words to the song, though. Me? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Look at that man, Dale. There's been nice teaching you stuff, like, for real. Right? It's fun learning. <laughs> I've I, never heard anybody say that in my life. I like learning shit, even if it's unnecessary things. Hey. If I find it interesting. It's I was going to say, this ain't unnecessary, man. Yeah, that's a lot I find of people's. It, exactly. If I find it interesting, I'm going to like it. If you don't find it interesting, that's fine. But like, I, I still think the shit cool. I think it's going to be exciting racing. Uh, we're going to see something you probably had never seen on Fox. Man. Most people um, my age, because I'm, I'm 27, most people remember where they were when uh when no, dale passed no cap i've gotten so many stories in my comments about like what's all the yep oh yeah i remember i dude i remember vividly where i was man it's crazy now the car behind him is his teammate dale earnhardt jr then the man who owns those cars dale earnhardt pretty impressive the DEI cars up there in the lead. Dale Earnhardt Inc. DEI stands for Walter Earnhardt Jr. Earnhardt Sr. They want one of those cars to win. Oh! Look at Earnhardt. Sterling got into Earnhardt. 
Dale is doing everything he can to keep Sterling behind him because this is a chess match at high speed. Michael Waltrip has never won a cup race. Every driver dreams of winning the Daytona 500. Michael Waltrip dreams just of winning any race to break that big over streak over 462. Everybody said, why did Dale put Michael in this car? Folks, here's why he put him in there. Michael wants to win a race worse than anybody out there. And he's not going to give up that lead without a fight. Darrell, your first ever race on Fox. You think it'd be like this? That's the greatest race in the world today. Okay, so just a quick question. Michael Waltrip is number 15. Right? Yes. Dale yep. is three. Yep. Dale Jr. is, what was it, 23? Number eight. Eight. How did I get twenty three? I'm trying. I don't. I, I don't know. Maybe I, don't I saw twenty three on one of the cars, but eight. Okay, eh, so eight, maybe. three, and fifteen. Yep. Okay. So you you understand though the premise of like teams in NASCAR, right? Like, I don't. Like, okay. You, like, I don't necessarily understand like mm -hmm. how do you figure out who you want to place like better then you on your team like on your team or like is it just like oh since he's ahead i'm gonna help him out and hope help that he gets you know in first. in certain scenarios it plays out like that uh for for what it's worth nascar is kind of an in, in individual's you know sport where it's you know you're the driver you want to be the winner obviously mm -hmm. but in terms of like what was going on specifically in this race um so Michael Waltrip, Dale Earnhardt Jr., both driving for DEI, which is Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, yeah. which is Dale Earnhardt's team. Dale Earnhardt, in the process of owning that team, drove for a team himself called Richard Childress Racing. So, for, you know, that's what I'm saying, where it's kind of like Richard Childress would love for Dale Earnhardt to be in the lead and winning that race in that scenario, but instead... Dale Earnhardt was more than okay with, you know, Michael Waltrip and Dale Jr. finishing one, two, and him finishing yeah, third. Him finishing third. He okay. was totally content with finishing third that day. Yeah, I could tell. I could tell. And that's literally what everybody was talking about, like, when I watched, like, the very, not, was it the very first, like, video I watched for that, uh, for that race? I think it was that. Oh, uh, one, one of them, yeah. It was one yeah. of them, though, but yeah. He said five, he was driving five, defensively. Five, 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 yeah. Come on, Mike, let's go. My man. Stay under him, Dale Jr. Just stay under him, buddy. Block him, block him. Got him, boy. To the flag. Come on, Mikey. You got it, man. You got it. 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 Such a bittersweet day. The great car got big trouble. Does this feel like history? Yeah. Like this, like all of this was supposed to happen on that day. It, it, there is a lot of weird things about this day that seem very poetic. This, the, the whole it's season poetic, of 2001 right? seemed very poetic. Bro, that's like literally, like just watching it and just hearing like the whole backstory, I'm like, this is just so poetic. Like it's crazy. Like this just seemed like it was meant to be a movie. Yeah, and and Michael Waltrip's story adds to it in such a weird way to add another dimension of like it's not even the fact that it was Dale Earnhardt and Dale Jr. There's a whole story to it. Yeah. And um, I asked Ty, you know, how come Dale's not here? And then my friend Kenny Schrader, uh, he he came to Victory Lane, and. Um, and I never will forget because he he comes up and says, "I just want you to know, uh, I saw Dale. And it ain't it ain't good." I don't think people. No, let me back up. So people, people are obviously capable 
of handling the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. God made us that way. But I don't know I don't know how many people have, uh, have had to experience them within seconds of each other. He has a huge point there. Oh, now I get why they called it blank. Okay. Yeah, that clicked. Yeah, that clicked. Is this an ad? Yo, did we really get it? I'm done. We really get Okay, look. We gonna skip, but we'll we'll see y'all in a second after the ad is over. I guess we gonna have to we gonna have to sit through some ads, y'all. But this That's is for so you guys. This is for you guys. We'll bro. see you guys in a bit. All right, I think we're back, y'all. Uh, we ended up switching to Amazon because fuck ads. <laughs> Give a shout out to Kyle for uh, hooking us up with the with the blink of an eye Amazon link. <laughs> Got you. I bought this like the day it came out on Amazon. I, I already knew I wanted to watch it like weeks beforehand. Now you have it forever. Yeah, yeah. Man's looking fresh. So he became an analyst for uh, for Fox Sports after his racing career ended. This looks so in depth. The rice and like really behind have your my scenes. like like this mm -hmm. when I'm talking to you, know, <clears throat> and I'll say it's it's gonna be tough. So just pay close attention, listen to me, and then you whip you you go. I think I got this. Seventeen years later, I I haven't gone to therapy, and I still struggle with it, but. Everything on earth happens for a reason. Our, our, our hairs are counted, our, our days are numbered, and we're gonna leave this world when we're supposed to leave it. Life's, life's hard. <laughs> You're gonna have ups and downs, and I'll be darned if my two biggest ones of my, you know, two of the biggest ones of my life came crammed together, and, and you just gotta, you gotta persevere. <clears throat> you gotta keep pushing. I like music too much. I literally bob my head to anything. <laughs> just got a nice beat to it though. No, it has a nice beat, but I'm just saying I'll literally nod my head to anything. In Owensboro, Kentucky. Like if you watch any reaction video, I'm pretty sure at some point so if there's music, you can catch me nodding. I my shared head. a room with my sister until <laughs> I was seven or eight years old. Eventually everybody moved out and it was just me and mom and dad. And um, okay. we, we lived right there in town and I was always dog. trying to find somebody to race bikes with. I remember, like, I would organize 500 lap bike races. And we'd go in a circle 500 times because that was like a NASCAR race. My brother was the reason why I was such a dreamer. You know, when I was born, he was 16. And so every every day of my life that I knew of, he was racing. They're 600 feet away from the line. Baker goes to the inside. Waltrip has won it. Darrell Waltrip in victory lane for the 10th time this season. He had figured out a way. My dad worked, was a Pepsi man. My mama worked at the grocery store. And he had figured out a way to talk them into buying him a go-kart. And mom wow. and dad kept helping, and, and he won on his go-kart. And he kept winning. And while there, wasn't a, a, there was no extra money, they figured out a way to help Daryl. And uh, I said, I want to do that, too. I want to be just like my big brother. 
one thing I can tell you about Mike, he has a big heart. He, he, he loves to give. He loves to help people. Uh, he's proven that time and time again. Um, he probably a little bit opposite of me. I might be a little bit selfish. He is, he is a good man, and he is a good brother. He's a better brother to me than I was to him, un unfortunately. But I think, we, I think in a lot of ways we've made up for that. We would go yeah, to, think about uh, how hard it is for one person to make it into NASCAR, just, just let alone was, two uh, brothers from the same city. Little Hick town, town in Kentucky and, and, making um, it out and going to the races both getting into NASCAR. Right, and making it big. Mom and dad would come with the car loaded up, packed up on a Wednesday afternoon, get me out of school, and we would uh, start our trek to Daytona. drive to Daytona through the night to be there on Thursday morning for the qualifying races. That beach look nice. <laughs> Where is that? Florida. Oh shit, never mind. I never Down in Daytona, Daytona Beach. Going through that Florida, tunnel Florida the first scares time. me. Florida scares me too, but this is uh, this is like the holy grail of, of NASCAR races. This is it's the Super Bowl of NASCAR. Like this is the place you want to go at least once. Yeah. And how massive those turns were, how high they were banked. And who has the most wins here? A huge track this was. Oh, Richard Petty. Intrigued How many does he have? I'm complete. Uh, bro, you're asking loaded so questions. <laughs> hey, look, 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 Getting look, to watch look. my brother race gotta, there. Gotta, gotta, gotta know. Gotta it just learn. Continue to build the the energy and and my enthusiasm for one day getting the chance to race there. You know, I told mom and dad, my buddy down the road's got a go kart, and it's five hundred dollars, and I'm gonna be able to race. And they said, well, we don't have $500, and you don't have $500. So what, how do you think you're going to do this? Daryl had a really nice car when he came to town. He was winning trophies. And heck, I even saw him holding a big check once that said $1,000. I said, I don't even need half of that. Like, I got this. I know what I'll do, Mom. I'll call Daryl. But I remember when I was 12, climbing up on the the kitchen table and dialing up Daryl, telling him I wanted to go racing just like him. He's like, brother, it's a long road. Lightning very rarely strikes twice. And Mom and dad don't want to go through all that again. I put them through a lot. And uh, I don't think it's in the cards for you. And I'm like, all right, okay, well, I'll see you later. And hung up and I thought, well, well, well damn, that didn't go anything. I didn't go anything near like I thought it was gonna. My brother Bobby, Look at that stash. Bro, what type of stash is that? I convinced Bobby <laughs> that I could drive that go-kart if he would give me a Dude, chance. The 70s were crazy. On there, I'll remember when they came to Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I live in Franklin, not far from there. And Bobby called me and said, Michael's gonna run his first race at the go-kart track over in Murfreesboro, why don't you come and watch? And so we go to the racetrack, and I get on Bobby's go-kart. And he goes into the first turn of that go-kart race. Yo, go-kart racing look kind of fun, though. He's in the grass. He's Yo, in the it's dirt. like the He's normal go-karting that you go to, He's but on steroids. I know, track. that's why it looks fun. When's the race? My first ever race. First time I ever drove anything. I won. And I left there that day thinking, I am good at this. And I will be a race car driver. That's how you got to do it.
So I didn't give him enough credit for the ability he had. And I didn't give him enough credit for the desire he had. And I didn't give him enough credit for the resolve he had. And so as time went by, we were not close. He's over here, I'm over here. And, and he was doing his thing and I'm doing my thing. And I'm trying to, I'm fighting tooth and nail with everybody else. I don't need my brother involved. You know, I had this plan. I'm gonna race at Kentucky Motor Speedway, the same track that Daryl started at 16 years earlier. I'm gonna move up to the Darlington Dash Series. That's the four cylinder mini modified cars. They would race on Saturday. I'm gonna win the championship in Dash. And the next year I'm moving to the Bush Series. Just a quick question. So I'm not hmm. a cars person at all. What is the difference between these cars when they be like four cylinder, like what what did they be talking about? Because I I be lost, clueless. So c cylinder would be the the engine size. Like you know how you got a V eight in a truck, like a big truck has like a V eight in it. Okay, yeah. That's an eight eight cylinder, like it's an okay. eight cylinder engine. Um, <clears throat> various. Um, Wait. Also, powers. I don't know if it's me, but your headset messing up. Like it's like staticky. It could be me, but it might be you. Okay, that's better. <clears throat> so it was you? I think so. <laughs> I don't know um but yeah that's that's basically and so it's a little bit different now because some of the series aren't like a thing anymore um a lot of a lot of young people start on something like go-karts they'll move to like dirt um you know like uh like they're called like midgets like quarter midgets stuff like that that's like I did not the know small, that. like the small dirt cars with like the wings on it and stuff they're you know that most of them will move to like modifieds which are like the open wheel modified some will go there some will go to like to the to the arca menard series which arca used to be like a, a real it still is it's a still really nice uh stepping stone to nascar um k n n has a a west and east series that you can be a part of there there's a good amount of ways to kind of like make your own in Start, nascar yeah and like, but, like make your way <clears throat> but you once you you know in at least in my opinion you you know you start making it when you kind of hit like menards the arca series and then like the truck series once you get into there it's kind of like i've established myself people know i can drive you know mm -hmm. it's i'll get an expandy ride and then i'll get a cup ride you know it's kind of like how the the linear process goes where it's kind of like a triangle you want to okay. get to that point okay. eventually gotcha 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 I'm gonna run the Saturday races in the Bush Series and win that championship. And, and I can't that, hear nothing. Now. Nope. Oh, my dumbass is streaming the screen. <laughs> there we go. Hey, On there Sunday, we go. we're going cup racing. That's what the kid was dreaming. <clears throat> I had an opportunity to drive a mini modified car at Kentucky Motor Speedway, and I needed $400 sponsorship. If you don't have a sponsor, you don't go racing. What's cool about being in 2020 is that people have found their way up into NASCAR through iRacing as well. Oh, really? Yep. William Byron's probably the most famous said, example. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you someone who $400 practiced and you know competed parts. in iRacing you just have to put and, my name on your car you know people thought he was good <laughs> they're like well let's put you in a car and see Deal. if you do it for real and, oh, that's yeah. dope. and I won the feature you won that too Damn, my, it makes me up. in 82 it makes this life. ride in the Darlington Dash series opened up I had sponsorship from a gentleman named Bill Borden. Well, look Guess at how Man's I got go. that sponsorship. Daryl Waltrip. Daryl Waltrip. Daryl has come to the party now. I helped him when I could. When I, I guess, quite honestly, in a selfish way, when it was convenient, I helped him. But not, not every day. You know, I'd gone from, we're not going to be able to work this out, son. It's not gonna work for you. To go-karts, to the mini modified Kentucky Motor Speedway track championship, to champion of the Dash Series in NASCAR. It was incredible how well I did and how good I could drive.
feel like at this point he's you know like crazy when you're a kid, himself, you don't really drummer. understand how how I think you gotta be unrealistic it would be. I don't think anybody's out there thinking that they uh, suck. Me to be able to to True. do what I, I we were able to eventually do. But I'm saying like so early. I just felt like a kid, yeah, like yeah. a normal kid that that um, happened to wind up in the middle of some extraordinary circumstances. Once in a great while, in every sport, a superstar emerges. Babe Ruth in baseball, in boxing, Jack Dempsey. And during 1967, another superstar emerged. His name is Richard Petty. Oh, Richard snap. Petty was the most successful racer in the history of NASCAR. He had a nickname. They called him the King. Richard Petty the first the guy I thought died <laughs> in my very <laughs> first reaction I was, video. I was going to say that's amazing. You thought you talked guts, dude. Man, <laughs> I thought he was gone. <laughs> Look at him. This man fly. Very eccentric. Very, very eccentric guy. And I'm going to leave when you talk about me, so in case you say something bad, I don't have to listen to it. <laughs> I, say something good. <laughs> I just want you to know how much I appreciate okay, you. Hi, man. Good morning. I feel bad I have helped get him started. So yeah. <laughs> I want everybody here to know how much I love that man. I much I appreciate it. Okay, Mikey. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know exactly the first time I ever seen Holy. Him. Well, there's my answer. Yeah, he's seven. Yeah, yeah. Seven time Daytona 500 winner. Goddamn. 200 NASCAR Cup wins. Learned that in the fucking. Um, a lot of those the are very, um, yeah. you know, that's there wasn't, still, that's... there wasn't the same, there wasn't the same amount of scoring oh, yeah. and, uh, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't the same stuff. But that's that was still going like on today, insane though. But... He's still been around for yeah, a yeah, long yeah. time. Yeah. Just then that, that number is a little, you know, so there's a d big debate on that number. Fe I feel it. I feel uh, it. But, uh, somehow or another him and Kyle, my son got together somewhere. Michael moved in with him for a while. So in 83, when I moved in with Kyle, eventually giving me a job um, at Petty Enterprises. Petty Enterprises. You hear what I'm saying? This is the, the most successful team in the history of NASCAR. They not only race cars, they build cars. They manufacture these, these, these incredible racing machines so one day i was getting ready to leave work it was about 45 minutes to drive to kyle's house mrs petty linda walks up and she says michael it's a long way out there to baden lake every day for you to make that drive we live right around the corner why don't you just move in they with have us? one of those egg and and now chairs i'm eating popcorn <laughs> they were loaded at midnight, yeah sitting on the couch with richard petty and we're talking about the race that, that happened that day. And we're talking about the car, the core. I love the way he says core. Well, the big deal was that Mikey really wanted to go to Cup. And, you know, he'd already run some baby grand races and some other stuff. And I thought, in 1984, it's the Bush Series, just like this kid planned. And I told him, I said, you know, forget working your way up or just go, go start at the top. If you want to be a Cup driver, you got to get in a cup car. You're wasting your time with those little baby grand cars or running the Bush series. You want to be a cup driver? You just start right now. In that way, you don't have to relearn from one kind of race car to another kind of race car. And that's the first time I'd ever heard that. I thought I had to run the Bush series. And so I said, all right, how do you think I should do that, Rich? The, the Bush series is what the Xfinity series is now. Also, the Xfinity series is what the Bush series used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. The, literally, it's just based on the name of the sponsorship. Okay. Last, last year, the Cup Series was called the Monster Energy Series. Uh, it's been called the Nextel Cup Series. The there Spring are so Cup many series. sponsors for NASCAR. Yeah. Like, yeah. so many. It's insane. It's a, it's a sponsor-driven sport, to be honest. And if, if a sponsor don't like the person that's in that car... They can uh, they can kind of flex their muscle and get somebody uh, somebody gone. Oh wow! If they if they, if they saw yeah as if they saw fit. As easy as that. As yep. easy as that. Well, I think I, I didn't think it was already twenty minutes, but it's already been it's been like thirty minutes.
Yeah. So uh, I think this is a good place to stop the video. You feel? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. All right, everyone. Uh, we didn't get too far into it, but we're going to cut this up into parts because if we don't, there's no way my computer will be able to handle it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Editing this. <laughs> my shit might explode. But I hope you guys like the little duo reaction uh, uh, thing. He's helping me learn more as we watch. So I hope you all enjoy that whole little aspect of it. Um, he in the NASCAR. He also does Twitch. So, you know, go ahead and plug plug your, plug your Twitch in there, you know? <laughs> plug, plug it, plug your um, yeah, I, I definitely enjoy NASCAR. Um, and I stream every now and then, but work's kind of been got me uh, in a weird schedule right now. So I stream when I can, but my Twitch is uh, twitch.tv slash Dr. Johnny Hopkins. And uh, I play anything from like Call of Duty to like Among Us. To, uh, I've done some iRacing stuff on there too. So if you ever... Uh, if you ever feel like stopping by i'll be more than welcoming to you stop by check my mans out i hope y'all enjoyed the video his link will be down in the description so make sure to go check his shit out and y'all already know how to get in contact with my shit but like comment subscribe and i'll see y'all next video i love y'all peace they wanna fall what? Like when I was down bad, was stuck in the mud Now nigga didn't clean up Louis V on the so-so Was